Hello students, welcome to this unit, this sound production techniques. Today, we shall be looking at how you can record your audio. So, we'll first start by looking at the, uh, uh, the audio chain setup and how you can establish one. So, we'll be looking at all the components that you need uh, in order for you to record your sound. Uh, in another lesson, we shall be looking at sound reproduction. So today, it will just be sound production. Uh, to start with, this being sound production techniques, we shall look at uh, how to set up setting up of the audio chain and in uh, uh, what we mean by the audio chain is that you uh, we need uh, several components and we shall uh, look at how you can establish this uh, uh, chain setup from uh, from the source all the way to the recorded audio. And of course there are some requirements and these requirements are uh, in terms of uh, the equipment and uh, from uh, this chain setup I want to just establish graphically as an illustration uh, from where you start to where you end. So in this case, you need the sound source. So the first thing is the source of the sound. Let me use audio for now. Uh, you know the, because we have already uh, 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 defined some of these terms, what audio stands for and what sound stands for. Let me use audio. So the first thing that you need is the source of that audio and of course that should be the person who is uh, either performing or the person who is speaking the, uh, and uh, that's the person that you want to record. So in this case uh, we need the source of the audio. Number two, we need the transducer that uh, that uh, will convert the acoustic the acoustic sound or the, aco uh, the acoustic sound to an electrical signal and that transducer is the microphone of course we have different types of microphones and of course we shall uh, also be uh, explaining uh, how the microphones work and how they convert the electrical, uh, oh, sorry, the, the acoustic uh, uh, sound to an electrical signal, which can now be processed by our mixer, which can also be processed by uh, our amplifier, and ultimately it will be recorded using the computer, uh, using uh, a software that we shall be introducing later. So we need that. The other important component that we need in this audio uh, chain setup is uh, are the connecting leads or the cables. Leads. Stroke cables. So we have uh, different types of cables and uh, we shall be looking at them. Then uh, the other component that we need is the machine that we shall be using to uh, uh, to process this audio and of course in this case now we need what we refer to as the audio board the audio board and this audio board has several components in it it has one the mixer that is under the audio board we have the mixer 
we have the console. Okay, we have uh, the effects. Okay, and of course the output components, which uh, include uh, the processors. Yeah, you might want to either compress your audio, you might want to expand that audio. So uh, this again comes in uh, in this audio chain setup. The other component that we need here is the monitoring uh, equipment. Okay, the monitoring equipment. And uh, with monitoring, we have several gadgets that you can use. You can use uh, the studio monitor speakers. Uh, you can also use uh, the headphones. If you don't have headphones, maybe you can go for the earphones. Then uh, we also have uh, the VU meter, uh, which of course we shall uh, be looking at later. So all these are the components that you need uh, in uh, order for you to be able to record your sound. And finally, of course now, you need the recording device. So the last component is the recording Uh, device and uh, the recording device can either be an audio recorder audio recorder whether digital or tape based or analog for that matter it can also be a computer a computer of course uh, not just the computer but this computer because the computer is just the hardware, we also need the computer and the recording, the recording software. Of course, we have uh, hundreds of uh, software that you can use for recording. But uh, uh, for this class, we shall be looking at, uh, we shall be learning how to record using one of. Uh, uh, the softwares that we have that is uh, Adobe Audition and of course uh, once you learn how to use Adobe Audition you should also not have uh, 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 you should not have a challenge recording using uh, other software like uh, uh, Nero Wave Editor, uh, Sound Booth and others so uh, in this case once you learn how to use one then uh, you should also be comfortable with the others so uh, I would recommend that you learn how to use uh, Adobe Audition and uh, also Cubase. So if, uh, you, you, uh, if uh, you familiarize yourselves with uh, the two software, then you are good to go when it comes to uh, recording a sound. So we shall start with uh, what we had mentioned be uh, before, that you must have the source of the audio. And of course, in this case today, I am the source then we need to have a transducer. A transducer is a device that converts one uh, form of energy into another. So uh, in this case, we have uh, the microphone uh, uh, being the transducer uh, in this uh, uh, scenario today. A transducer, uh, uh, not just the, <coughs> the microphone, but even speakers, uh, speakers are also uh, they are also transducers in that they convert uh, electrical energy into acoustic energy. So those two. Then uh, we have the connecting leads and all that. So let's start now with the transducer. So for the transducer in this case, we are looking at the microphones. So to demonstrate here, we have uh, different types of microphones uh, at our disposal here. And of course, as we have said, all that the uh, microphone does is to convert acoustic energy. As I speak, the air from my lungs 
being pushed by the diaphragm uh, makes my voice box to vibrate. And those vibrations uh, in my voice box make the air molecules around me to also vibrate. And those vibrations are what we are referring to as sound or it's a form of energy known as acoustic energy. So all that now the microphone does is to convert that acoustic energy into an electrical signal. What happens here is that the microphone, and of course uh, I've dismantled this microphone for demonstration purposes, uh, what happens here is that in here we have a diaphragm in here. Okay, and for the purpose of uh, you to know what happens here, I will uh, again illustrate something here for you, how the microphone works. But of course, it also depends on uh, the type of microphone or how it's made, because this is a dynamic microphone. So uh, I will use this example of the dynamic microphone so that you can uh, understand. So in this case, you will find that... Uh, We have an outer shell, okay, of this microphone, which is made of a magnet. So this is a magnet. And it's a permanent magnet. Then in here, we have a center core, like that, which, has, which is attached to a plate up here okay a plate and in this core here there is also an attached coil so this is a a coil around this center core and the center core is attached to this diaphragm or this plate up here so when i speak into this microphone the vibrations of the air that acoustic energy makes this plate to also vibrate. So moving in and, and out. Okay? So it will be moving in or down, up, down, up. So what is going to happen is that uh, this, because it is attached to this core, it's going to make this core to also move. But still, this core has a coil that is wound around it. So, in essence, what is going to be happening here is that the coil will be moving. But remember, because this is a magnet, so it means that this coil here is suspended within a, a, a magnetic field. So, the movement of the coil within this magnetic field makes, uh, uh, makes the... Uh, or, or rather, what I was saying is that the movement of this coil within the magnetic field uh, uh, results to what we refer to as uh, electromagnetic induction. And with electromagnetic induction, that means that there will be, uh, or what will be resulting here is a production of an electrical voltage, a positive on this end and a negative on this end. And that's why when you look at these uh, when you look at uh, uh, this microphone here, you can actually see that we have this and this terminal here. One giving us an output which is positive voltage and the other one negative. So that is what now flows through these two wires, positive and negative. And that now becomes the electrical uh, 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 voltage that represents the audio. So in essence, what we are saying is that the microphone here is a transducer. It has uh, converted electrical energy, it has converted, ele uh, sorry, acoustic energy into electrical energy. So that is uh, how a basic uh, microphone works. So of course we have different types of microphones. Uh, because this is a dynamic microphone, as I mentioned, we have another type of a microphone known as a, a condenser microphone or, uh, uh, or uh, 
anyway, this is a, a condenser a microphone, uh, which again requires to be powered for it to operate. So this microphone, unlike this one, which we uh, usually say that it's rugged, this one requires power. That power is known as phantom power, and it's usually supplied either by the mixer that you are using, the one that you have connected your uh, microphone to, or the camera. So some cameras uh, actually can, uh, uh, can uh, supply the phantom power to this microphone. The, that is the condenser microphone. And it works by having or supplying or that phantom power, which is uh, a positive voltage, 48 volts, uh, charges the two plates which are in, uh, in this microphone. And, uh, of course, that charge uh, produces some kind of resistance. And uh, any acoustic energy falling onto the two plates and making them coming close and all that makes uh, 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 produces more resistance. And uh, the, the resistance... That resistance at results as, uh, as a result of uh, these two plates trying to come together. That is now that difference now becomes uh, the audio voltage, and that's what is recorded as sound. So we have uh, uh, different, uh, of course, uh, different models. This is a condenser microphone. This is also a condenser microphone. So the second uh, category of microphones is. Uh, 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 according to their polar patterns or their sensitivity, the directionality of the microphones. So microphones are usually uh, made uh, to operate for different uses. So in this case, the way they are constructed, their construction can uh, be based on their polar pattern, their directionality. In that, there are some microphones that are sensitive to sounds that come from a specific direction. And those are known as unidirectional microphones. We have bidirectional microphones. These are microphones that are sensitive to sounds coming from two sides. For example, this microphone uh, has that feature in that you can change the, the directionality or the polar pattern of the, uh, of, uh, the microphone. So. Uh, in this case, you find that at this point here, you can, uh, we have uh, a switch that you can switch from the different polar patterns uh, just to vary its uh, directionality. But of course, we have those that have a fixed uh, uh, polar pattern. So uh, the mic can either be a unidirectional microphone, it can be a bi-directional microphone, meaning that it, ha it is sensitive to sounds coming from uh, uh, two directions or, or two opposite directions, or it can be uh, uh, an omnidirectional microphone, meaning that it is sensitive to sounds coming from all directions. So, uh, but of course, nowadays, uh, the technology that is there is that of uh, having a microphone that can uh, that uh, you can actually change the polar pattern so that you can uh, you can use it in different situations. So in this case, uh, we also have other uh, like uh, the cardioid uh, uh, microphones. Cardioid, it's because the pattern, the polar pattern of uh, that microphone uh, makes the shape of the heart. Cardioid. So uh, because of the of that. Uh, then uh, uh, we have uh, it being given that name. So with a cardioid, what happens is, uh, if it is a cardioid, uh, if we were to switch these to, to the cardioid uh, setting, what is going to happen is that the polar pattern or the sensitivity of this microphone will be all these direction like that, all the way to the front, to the side, and again, to this other end. So in this case, the polar pattern is that the, the microphone will be sensitive to sounds coming from all directions apart from the back, therefore uh, creating the shape of the heart, that polar pattern. So that is uh, with the cardioid uh, 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 polar pattern. So you can also switch it to bi-directional so that the sounds, uh, uh, the, 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 the microphone will be sensitive to sounds that come from 
two directions, either on, the, on this side, the right side, or the left hand side. Or you can switch it to omni-direction. So in this case, with omni, if I switch it to omni, it means that the microphone will be sensitive to sounds coming from all the directions. So it's uh, important for you to note that actually uh, we can have that category, the second category, of, uh, that is a, a category according to the polar pattern of the microphone, or how sensitive uh, the directionality of the sensitivity of uh, that microphone to sounds. So that's the second category. We also have the unidirectional microphone, and uh, a good example is this microphone here, what is also known as a shotgun microphone, and uh, it's sensitive to sounds that are coming from the direction where the microphone is pointed to. So if I point uh, the microphone towards this direction, then uh, 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 it will be more sensitive to sounds that are coming from that front. If I point it to this other direction, the same. So it is sensitive to sounds that are coming from the front. It's a unidirectional microphone. So, and of course, there is a way we use it. And uh, that's what we shall be looking at next, the third category, how we, or how the microphones are used. So, as we have said, so far we can say that a microphone can be a condenser microphone, which, or whose directionality could be bidirectional. It can be a, uh, a, a dynamic microphone, and it's unidirectional. So the polar pattern can be combined with the, 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 the construction of that microphone, the way it's made to operate. It can also vary. And uh, as you have seen, these are condenser microphone, but we can even uh, we can vary. We can vary the uh, the directionality uh, of uh, the sensitivity of uh, these sounds. So the third category is how we make use of these microphones. How how we use the microphones. How uh, to what use, that is, do we place these microphones? So in this case, we have desk microphones. Desk microphones are usually mounted on a desk. So if uh, you have a desk stand and you place this microphone on that desk stand, then it becomes a desk stand. Oh, sorry, a desk microphone. We have stand microphones. And with a stand microphone, if you were to use a microphone stand like this one here, then you place your microphone here, then that is a microphone, oh, oh, sorry, a stand microphone. It's the way we are using the microphone. If for example, in a choir setup, if we were to hang the microphones where uh, these choir members uh, 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 sing from, and we have uh, some uh, microphones hanging from above, then those microphones will be said to be hanging microphones. We can attach the microphone on the lapel of your subject's uh, clothing. The lapel is a fold on the clothing. It can also be said to be a necktie and all that. So if, like the one that I'm wearing here, so in this case, uh, if you attach that microphone uh, on the lapel, then it becomes a lapel microphone. But this, the same, same microphone here, this is a dynamic microphone, so it falls in that first category, it's a dynamic microphone. It's also, in terms of directionality, it's an omnidirectional microphone. So it has a, 
uh, it has uh, it is sensitive to sounds coming from all directions so it's omnidirectional this then now for it now to fit into the third category it's the way we use how do we use it so we use it by attaching it to uh, to the lapel of the microphone then the other one that I had mentioned about uh, the transmitter microphone. So with the transmitter microphone, again, we say that it's, again, according to the way it's used. So the transmitter microphone transmits. It transmits uh, wirelessly. So it has the ability to transmit wirelessly. So this is a wireless microphone. But still, in the description of this microphone, we can say that it's a dynamic microphone, it's a dynamic microphone, and it's a cardioid microphone. Okay? So the directionality, so it's dynamic, then its directionality can be described to be, uh, to be cardioid. And again now, when it comes to use, it's handheld wireless microphone. Okay, we are holding it by hand. And it's also uh, transmitting, the way it's also working, it's doing it wirelessly. So, uh, these are things that you will familiarize yourselves with even when you get to the industry. And the, uh, one, if you have that other knowledge, then... Uh, it will be great. Let me come back to this microphone here. With this microphone, this is a unidirectional microphone known as a, a shotgun microphone. Okay, but how do we use it? We use it by, uh, and uh, I think I can call upon my assistant here to come and uh, assist on something. So, yes, so this is a, a shotgun microphone. It's a unidirectional microphone. But how do we put it to use? We can actually use it even in this room. We can just place it here and we'll still be able to use it. But professionally, this is uh, mostly used when we are recording outdoors and when we are engaged in maybe dramatic productions and such. So this, when we use it together uh, with a pole, it will now be referred to as, uh, it, uh, as a boom mic or a boom microphone. So, so of course we have uh, this outer casing, this shell that you see, okay, this shell is meant, it, it has uh, got a, a very fine piece of uh, cloth here, okay, which acts as a pop filter, or it uh, helps to filter out the popping sounds that might be coming from uh, 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 without. So in that case, you can have that pop filter. And of course, if now you are using it outdoors, where it is windy, then you'll have now to uh, use uh, the, uh, the dead cut, okay? This is the dead cut, the, this outer sheath, okay? Which again helps to protect uh, the microphone from the wind. Because of course, when the microphone uh, gets into contact with the, with the, with the wind, uh, it will produce a lot of noise. So again, we use now this dead cut to try and protect that microphone. And of course, we, we shall be minimizing the noise from uh, the wind. So once you attach it to, uh, once you attach it to the pole, uh, again, Again, it has got this XLR output. It has got this XLR output. So you attach your, uh, your XLR cable to get the 
audio from or the sound from this microphone. So again, we use we connect the XLR cable like that. Then we shall be able to connect these to uh, either the camera or to our mixer. So in this case, you can connect it to directly to your camera. So you can connect it to the camera like that and you'll have your audio coming directly into your camera. So uh, most, in most cases we use the boom mic in uh, video production, dramatic production. So in this case now you'll have uh, the person uh, holding that boom, he's known as the boom swinger. So he'll be holding, he'll be holding the, uh, uh, the, the, the microphone from above. So he'll have to raise that microphone by holding like that and uh, the, uh, the sound will be recorded from above. And it is always good to record the sound from above instead of from below because if you record from below, most of the time you are going to end up with a lot of noise because there is a lot of movement, footsteps and all that, uh, vehicles moving. So there will be a lot of uh, noise in uh, uh, this uh, level. So it's always advisable that you record from above where you have minimal noise. So that is uh, the boom mic. Boom mic because you are recording from above. That you are placing your microphone, uh, microphone uh, 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 above your subject. So that is uh, with the microphones. So as we have said, we have different types of microphones. They operate differently and they can be put to use in different ways. We also have uh, the neck microphones. We also have the headset microphones. Headset microphones, these are microphones that have uh, that you find uh, uh, attached together with the headphones. So you have the headphone or, and then you have the mic. So that is the headset microphone and many others. So we have different, so you'll be coming across many others uh, as uh, innovations uh, uh, continue. And uh, as I had said, we have the desk microphone. So for example, if we were to attach <coughs> this microphone here, then this will now become a desk microphone. This is a desk microphone. Right, so uh, enough of uh, the microphones, now we move on to something else. Now, the next thing that we shall do is now to establish, is now to establish the connection so that we have a complete audio chain. So remember, So we are now done with the transducer. So now let's get to the connecting uh, leads or those cables so that we can connect our transducer to the audio board. So here we go. So we have our mic here, which we have attached to a desk stand. So these are our two microphones attached to the desk stand. Then, <clears throat> of course, it's XLR output. So in this case, we need the other side. So connect that one end there. That is a female end to the male end. Then uh, the second one here, yeah. also connect, yes. 
okay? And this other end here, we connect it to output number two, okay? Uh, you might have a different requirement, for example, maybe you want to Uh, if you are using, this is what I'm looking for, sorry. If you are using a transmitter microphone, as we said, then uh, all that you need is a connecting lead from the receiver to the mixer. Okay. So in this case, we have connected uh, this receiver to the mixer. You might have a different connection. So now this one works with that receiver. The other connection that you might find yourself working with is now connecting the, the lapel, sorry, the lapel uh, to or the lapel microphone to the mixer. So again, as we had said, this is the transmitter which we attach. The transmitter is a, or receives the audio from the microphone. So we attach the mic to the transmitter. Then on this other end, after we have matched our audio or our frequencies, we attach these now to the mixer. So in all these scenarios, we have been able to establish, we have been able to establish a, a complete, a complete uh, connection uh, of our different microphones. Whether you are using a lapel, it's connected. You are using uh, a transmitter microphone, handheld transmitter microphone, it's connected. Uh, if you're using a desk microphone, it's connected. If uh, you're using uh, that condenser microphone, it's also connected. So that's how you connect your, uh, uh, your microphones to the audio board. Now, I keep on talking about the audio board because, as I said, <coughs> the audio board has the mixer function it has the console function, it has the effects function, and all these, uh, including the processor uh, function. So, in this case, I'll now start explaining or looking at the mixer. So, the mixer has several functions. It allows for, uh, for input of the audio signals. It also allows for uh, uh, for console function. Console, this is the equalization function. It also allows for the combination because a mixer basically combines the different out, uh, inputs into a single output. So that's where the name mixer comes from because we have uh, mic 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the different sources of that audio. Once that, uh, once it accepts the input, then it helps us to uh, balance the different uh, inputs, then uh, gives us a combined output. So it will have uh, mixed. That's why we refer to it as a mixer. Then we have the console function. So the console, so this is now the input here. All these are inputs. So sometimes it could also be line in. And let me talk about that because uh, it's also important. So any audio or signals, signals coming directly from microphones should be connected via the mic input. Via the mic input. And what that means is that the mic input will allow for amplification of that audio. Amplification of the audio. Remember, sounds that are coming from the microphones are very, very weak. 
and therefore the first thing that needs to be done is uh, to make them uh, better because they are vulnerable to noise and all that. So you have to first amplify. If your source is uh, from an already uh, processed audio, for example, you are playing music from your computer and all that, that music uh, or that audio is already strong. Okay, so what you need to do, it, uh, because it has already been amplified, you bring in through the line input. Uh, when it comes now to the operation of uh, the audio board, as I said, uh, the audio board has different components. It has the mixer function, it has uh, the console function, the effects function, the processor function, and many other functions that are still uh, uh, available. Again, also depending on the type of mixer, even the model and even the manufacturer, because manufacturers have incorporated all these gadgets, uh, all this functionality in the same gadget. And that's why we are referring to it as an audio board. So uh, it allows for input. And input, we have uh, two types of input. We have uh, the mic input and we have the line input. Now, mic input should always be used if your signals are coming from uh, if your signals are coming directly from a microphone. So you should connect your microphone directly to the mic input, the one that is labeled mic. In case your, 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 your signal, the audio signal, is coming from uh, uh, an external source such as a CD player, uh, uh, a computer, and uh, any other uh, signal that has already been processed, let it always come in through the line input and not the mic input because with mic input uh, any signal that goes in through the mic input has first to be uh, has first to be uh, uh, to be amplified and we don't want to amplify an already amplified signal if you do that then you'll be uh, amplifying noise and uh, you'll get to hear that somehow you have distorted your, uh, the quality of the audio because uh, there is the introduction of noise. So always uh, ensure that you do your connections correctly. The next thing that we have here is that in each of these inputs we have the controls and these controls can be the faders that you find here. Okay, All these uh, faders help you to establish the optimum level for your input. So if you have uh, different uh, sources of uh, your audio, you'll want to uh, have them at the same level or to balance the levels. So we use the faders to do that. So at times, if uh, it's a soft-spoken person who is connected to input 3, you will have to push input 3 up. Maybe you have a person who speaks uh, in a loud voice, very loud, then, you, and maybe he or she is connected to input uh, 4, then you'll have to bring 4 down. Okay, So you'll have now to keep on uh, uh, shifting uh, the levels so that you can achieve the correct audio level. Uh, and everyone uh, uh, involved uh, as a source or for that uh, uh, production will be hard to be at the same level because we don't want that kind of inconsistency in uh, uh, audio levels. So that is uh, the work of the faders. So you'll have to keep on listening and adjusting. Of course, you'll have to, uh, to achieve that, you will have to use your headphones. Headphones will allow you to notice whether there is any noise. It will not help you much in establishing the levels, but it will help you in detecting uh, maybe noise and noise levels uh, in your audio so that you can correct that. We don't want to record uh, our audio uh, with the noise. So in that case, we have to uh, use the headphones to monitor that. So you look out for noise using your headphones. For the levels, we use the LED meter here. 
or the VU meter. It can be a VU meter, which is needle-like. It also depends on uh, the, uh, the type of mixer that you're using. So you can have the needle-based uh, 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 volume unit meter, which will keep on. Uh, it just moves like uh, a speedometer. So in that case, you'll be able to know whether your audio is at the correct level or not. You can also use, nowadays most of the mixers that we have uh, have the LED uh, meters. Okay, uh, They make use of uh, the LED meters instead of the volume unit meter. So you'll have to keep on um, also checking your audio levels on your mixer. So uh, le let your audio level play between uh, an, uh, uh, for example, in this, uh, uh, in this, uh, uh, in this uh, mixer, it should uh, play between 4 here and maximum 6. So 4, 3, 4, 3, 4, 3. So that, is, uh, that should be the optimum level between 4 and 3. So occasionally moving to 6, occasionally, just uh, w w w w uh, a few times. So never let your meter go to the red level if you, it does that then there will be uh, what we know as clipping and you will be losing uh, you will be losing uh, some quality in your audio so that is as far as uh, the meters are concerned uh, the, uh, and as you do that of course you will also be recording so if you are recording using the software also be on the lookout on uh, whether you are getting the clipping of the audio and we'll get to that uh, as we record so once now you have your connection you have your inputs then you'll have to have your output of course on the right hand side here on the right hand side here we have the controls for the output so on this end we have the uh, uh, we have uh, uh, the fader here which will help us in controlling the volume level of the output so in this case we can output now so we have input we have all this and uh, of course this is the console with the console or the equalizer the console function is the equalization function where you are able to either enhance or cut uh, uh, a, a, a specific uh, range of frequency you can enhance it or you can cut so in this case we uh, in this mixer we have uh, three bands of the frequency high mids and the lows so you can either cut the highs or you can enhance the highs you can cut the mids where our vocals mostly lie or you can enhance you can also cut the bass that is low frequency sounds or you can enhance you can cut or enhance so that is the console function the auxiliary function here is for routing routing the audio so from uh, the audio board we still have the the function uh, known as the console function and uh, the console function is basically the equalization function this is where uh, you will now be able to manipulate the sound characteristics or the, 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 or the characteristics of your audio, the way it sounds, you can manipulate that either by enhancing or cutting as, uh, a certain, uh, a certain uh, 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 band of, uh, or a specific band of your frequency. So in this console, we have uh, a division from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz we have three bands a separation over the bands into three so we have the low the mids and the highs so with the lows they will range from uh, 80 hertz all the way to uh, 2500 hertz then from uh, 2500 hertz all the way to uh, 12000 hertz that is the mid frequency and then we have the high frequency that is frequencies that are above 12,000 hertz so 12,000 to 20,000 so in this case 
you can manipulate the highs or the lows or the mids you can either cut or you can enhance you can cut or enhance uh, these frequencies and of course if you need more bass you can enhance uh, you can just turn the knob to the right to enhance the low frequency sounds and your sound will have more bass sound so it will boom more if uh, you need to cut that maybe your, your original audio has more boom then what you can do is to cut on the bass you can enhance the highs the mids and all that so that is the console function and that is uh, basically what we can refer to as sound manipulation uh, or equalization for that matter. Then we have the other control which is uh, the auxiliary control and uh, with the auxiliary control it helps you to independently uh, uh, work with uh, 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 an input signal. So in this case you can route your signals uh, that is the input to some specific you can route them to some specific uh, outputs. You don't want maybe to combine input one with the rest. You want input one to be, uh, to be independent. If you want input one to be independent, then you can route that through the auxiliary control and input one will go to that specific output and not the main output. Then the other control that you will find is what we refer to as pan. Remember, most of uh, the microphones that we use are stereophonic. Stereophonic in that uh, they, they have uh, uh, the left and the, the right. So in this case, when you pan, panning movement of left to right. So when you place it at the center, then your audio signal will not be filtered. But if you push it to the left, then what is going to happen is that the right, uh, uh, the, the right track will not uh, be recorded. It will not be allowed. It will be filtered out. If you pan to the right, then it means that you will only have the right uh, uh, the, the sound coming from the right, right ear and not the left ear. So there is that filtration. So in this case, you can choose to pan or not to pan but it's always good unless maybe it's a live event it's a live production that's when now you can pan that's when you can uh, you can uh, do all these other things so it's recommended if you are recording just record naturally even without any sound manipulation don't even use the console when you are recording let everything be neutral do not try to enhance or cut anything do not pan just let it be so that when now uh, you record you record it the way it was naturally then afterwards using the software you can achieve the console function you can manipulate your audio the way you want okay and just, uh, still at that point you have a backup you can pan if you need to to pan uh, during the time of editing so uh, Unless, unless, unless you are in a live event, let the equalizer, let the console, let the, uh, the, the panning functions and all these other effects be at the, uh, be at a neutral without any addition, without any subtraction record the voice as it is. The only thing that you will control during the time of recording is the volume level. Then uh, the other function that uh, you'll find in the audio board, as I had mentioned, is uh, the effects. And with the effects here, yeah, you can also add the effects. And we have on this, on this uh, uh, audio board, we have various presets for the audio effects that you can add. With the effects, it's all about embellishing or coloring your audio, okay? Adding some color to it. Maybe you want it to sound as if uh, I'm in a certain room. So in that case, maybe you can try and work with some reverberation functions or effects. You might want to add some echo 
Okay? But again, as I said, unless you are in a live event, do not add any effect during the time of recording. Just record as it is. You will be able to add these effects during the time of editing. So, unless, and I am repeating this, unless you are in a live event, in a live situation, maybe you are live on air, on radio, and such, and you want to add these effects, or you want these effects to be, uh, to be present in your, in, your, in your rendition, then that's the time you can add. But if you are recording that audio, it's not going live. Let do not add any effect. Let uh, just record without any effect. So after that, now on this end here, the, uh, the 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 right hand side, I have now the outputs. So different outputs. Remember, I talked about the auxiliary. So you might want maybe to connect to different outputs, and of course we have uh, the main output. So the main again will give you both left and right channel. Still you'll get the same output here. Okay. Uh, on this end here you will have uh, some outputs. So you can have these outputs which are uh, uh, using the jack pin end. You can have you can also have these outputs here again using the XLR. So the controls, the volume controls are here. Okay, and again, as I said, you will have to constantly monitor your audio using uh, the headphones to listen for noise. If there is noise, then you need to do something about it to minimize noise. Still, your eyes should be on the LED meter so that you can constantly monitor. And we say that uh, your levels should be uh, a maximum of green but occasionally giving you a yellow or an orange or amber for that matter. So uh, also train your eyes on the monitoring of the LED uh, meter. So in this case, for example, if I can speak into my mic, if I speak into this microphone, uh, uh, of course, the LED meter will be lighting. And of course, here, yeah, I have also connected my, uh, my, my, uh, my audio board to this studio monitor speaker. So I'll be able even, uh, to listen. Uh, if I am, uh, have a play, have, of course, there is a way you need to place the monitor speaker so that, again, you don't get the feedback. The feedback because uh, of a direct contact of uh, the microphone and the monitor speaker and where the sound will keep on whiling okay and uh, it will give you that uh, screeching noise which we refer to as feedback so always place the microphone away from the monitor speaker or any other speaker so that you don't get that feedback so in this case i'll have to keep on monitoring and i can increase the volume level like that and the volume level is at that point. So in this case, I think it is okay because when you look at the LED meter here, you can actually see that it's not going past. It's not going past uh, the, 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 the green. So it's under the green. So, and I said that occasionally, that's when now it should go to level six. Uh, of course, there are times when uh, uh, there are some words that I'll uh, maybe, because of the inflection, stressing and all that, uh, to put some emphasis, that's where now you might find a six, occasionally that is, and not always. So most of the time it should be under, uh, uh, it should be at this level, uh, green and below. But of course, again, it has to be at the optimum. So it doesn't have to be too low. It has to be on the average. So always uh, monitor your LED uh, meter for the volume levels. The headphone, the headphone, the headphone might not give you the right 
audio level because this one is independent. The control for the volume for the headphone is independent and therefore uh, it might not be the best. So for the headphones, because this is now the volume for headphones, it's independent of the main. So I can increase here or I can reduce here. So it may not tell you the exact uh, volume level. So headphones, you reserve them for noise, monitoring noise. Or the clarity of the voice and such. But for volume levels, use uh, the LED meter. You can still use the uh, monitor speaker to monitor the noise and the quality of your sound. So after that, now, uh, we, ca we can now connect our, uh, our audio board to the recording device. We said that we have, uh, for the recording devices, we have either an audio recorder or a computer which has got uh, a recording software. So in this case, we have an audio recorder here. So you can use this recorder to record. To record the sound that you have uh, uh, processed using the audio board. So all that you do is just to have the uh, the audio recorder so in this case we have this professional audio recorder so with a professional audio recorder you will be able to connect from uh, the audio board again we get the output here at the back we can get the output from here Okay, using the uh, XLR cable, we connect to our audio recorder, like that. Then we switch on our audio recorder and we start recording. So in this case, once you switch on the audio recorder, it should uh, now be able to record. And now you can use the recording button to start recording. So that's one way of recording your audio. So you'll have stored your audio on this audio recorder, which has got uh, a memory card. It uses a memory card here. Yeah. Okay. It uses a memory card and we are able to uh, record uh, into this recorder. So the second uh, recording device is uh, the computer. And with the computer, you have the computer, and that computer must have a recording software. So in this case, uh, we use, in this case, we are going to use Adobe Audition. So we have Adobe Audition. And once you start Adobe Audition, it has two, it has two uh, 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 modes, okay? It has two modes uh, uh, when it comes to functioning. So the first one is known as the waveform uh, 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 mode, and the other one is a multi-track. So in this case, you can opt to record in either uh, waveform or multi-track so uh, in our case let's go for multi-track uh, sorry uh, waveform for, for us for, for, for a start so once you click on the waveform mode then you'll have now to give your production a name so in this case uh, we can say this is a sound trial one sound trial one okay then uh we have to come here and pick the sample rate so sampling rate again depends on the sound card installed in your computer 
Okay. So, uh, but uh, always ensure that you do not go below 44,100 sample rate. So the sampling rate should be 44,100 and above. You can go even up to 192,000 has. Well and good. The higher the sampling rate, the better. Because the quality also goes higher. But again, I'll say that that uh, uh, depends on the sound card that you are using. So uh, by default, this one is set to 48,000, which is 48 kilohertz. But as I've said, never go below 44. 100 because if you do that then even the human ear will be able to detect that that audio is of low quality so but uh, our our ears are not able to detect uh, 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 the difference in qualities above 44 100 but always go for anything higher than than that not below 44 100 then for the channels, just choose uh, stereo, even though we have, uh, you, you can choose mono, you can choose maybe 5.1, in case maybe you want to do some professional kind of uh, recording, especially with music. So uh, anyway, for, for, for the purpose of this class, we can go for stereo instead of uh, uh, mono, and we avoid mono, just go for stereo. It's better you record in uh, stereo, then later on you convert to mono. So it's better stereo. But of course, if you want to achieve the 5.1, that is the surround sound uh, recording, then you can go for 5.1. This is where you'll want to uh, uh, achieve uh, uh, the 3D sound and such. So uh, for now, let's go for stereo. Then with the bit depth, bit depth uh, we have... Uh, 32 float, we have 16 and others, eh? and even 24 and 8. So uh, it's always good to go for uh, for the highest, which is 32, uh, 32 bit. And 32 bit, all these means, the bit depth means or refers to the resolution of your audio. It's all about the dynamic range, which we had discussed in class about the dynamic range and uh, increasing the resolution of your audio so that it's of a higher quality. So once you do that, then you can say, okay. So in this case now, I have a new project. And uh, having a new project, it means that I am able to, uh, uh, to record. So in this case, I can hit the record button. Of course, you can see uh, the control here, the control buttons here. Okay. Uh, of course, now here you can play back, you can pause, you can uh, go forward, you can go a step forward, backward, and all that. You can record, you can loop, and many other uh, functions. <coughs> so, in this case, uh, we can start recording. So, I hit the record button, but of course, right now, uh, we have that audio coming in and I'm increasing the audio level. I will want to switch off my monitor speaker so that it does not interfere with the recording. So in this case, you can actually see that there is some audio that is getting into, uh, into the software. So it's being recorded. So after you have recorded, uh, you are done with the recording, then you will have to stop uh, the recording. So in this case, uh, we have uh, that sample of the recording. Of course, uh, maybe you might uh, discover that it's actually somehow low. So in this case, I can uh, opt to go and increase the audio level later. So all this time when I am recording, all this time when, as I am recording, I am uh, supposed to have my headphones on. I'm able to monitor to check for any uh, noise that could be coming in, especially uh, maybe because we are running our audio cables with uh, uh, together with the with the with the power cables here, because sometimes the, the, these are things that you can't avoid.
So sometimes you might find that uh, the AC power here is uh, or the uh, creates uh, an electromagnetic uh, uh, field around here and since my cable is passing through the same uh, place then uh, uh, there is uh, the introduction of that electromagnetic noise which you'll just hear as zzz. if you hear such kind of a, of a noise then you need now to check for uh, where it's coming from and uh, control it so that is now the work of the uh, of the headphones all right so uh, now we have our recording and once you are done then you can stop the recording so after you are done with your recording after done with your recording then you will have to save your uh, your file or that recorded audio file so you go to file then save or uh, if uh, that is in case you had already saved the project or you can go to file save us so once you go to save it's going to give you uh, uh, the, the save us dialog uh, uh, box to, so that you can uh, have your options there so in this case <coughs> Uh, we had said that uh, the project is uh, Sound Trial 1, so we still give it the same name. Then uh, we choose the location. So choosing the location, you have to go and browse. So most of the time, I advise that you have to create a folder for each of the projects that you are working on. So in this case, I can go to my documents or, or desktop. So in your PC, then you have to create a new folder. Once I create the folder, I give it a name. So uh, I can just say that uh, this is a sound production class. Sorry. Oh. Sound production class demo. Okay. So that's the name of, uh, sorry. I, class class demo okay then uh, i give it that name then uh, uh the name is there then i have uh, now again at this point to choose the type of file the type of file whether it is uh, uh, a double uh, a i double f whether it is uh, dolby digital whether it is flac whether it is window uh, windows media uh, uh, audio, whether it is MPEG-2, whether it is MPEG uh, uh, or MP2 audio, that is MP3 audio, whether it is Wave PCM. So, I always advise that you start by saving as Wave PCM dot .wav, dot .wav, where you see dot .wav, which means that your audio will not be compressed. So, the the resolution will remain to be uh, uh, the, uh, to be the highest possible. So always go for dot wav. You can later on uh, 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 convert to these other inferior quality uh, audio types. So in this case, you can convert from dot wav to dot mp3, but you will not be able to achieve. The, uh, uh, the correct quality if you are to uh, to change from or convert from mp3 to dot wav so always uh, have your audio saved as dot wav and that includes also when you are recording using an audio recorder choose wav on the recorder you will find that it will have the option for wav or mp3 for WAV or MP3. So always prefer to uh, save or to record in .wav. Later on, you can convert to .mp3. So always prefer .wav. So even here as uh, we save, we are going to save as WAV. So save. Then uh, <coughs> uh, sample type, again, Remember, we had uh, already chosen uh, during the time of uh, recording. We had chosen 48, 
has uh, 48 uh, kilo has stereo 32 bit and uh, you remember when we were starting the project that's what we uh, we, 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 want, uh, we, we chose those options but of course if you want to change you can change but for now let's just remain with that so you can change at this point here you can even downgrade it okay or do something to it so you can do those changes there uh, then uh, of course now that is uh, what we want wave and compressed you can see that and it's 32 bit floating point i triple e the institute of electrical and uh, 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 and electronic engineers so uh, that is the uh, standard then we can say okay so save and say okay okay no, no <coughs> you saw something like markers markers mean that uh, during the time of recording for example during the time of recording as you are recording let me start recording again as you are recording you can actually even uh, uh, make some uh, maybe there is something that you have noted during the time of recording and you want to draw your attention to, your, to it uh, during the time of uh, editing so in this case you can keep on marking you mark by pressing F8 so as I do that you can actually see that there are some markers that are appearing there on the screen okay so they help you uh, to go back and edit those points that you uh, you identified that they require some editing and that is can be done during the time of recording so uh, that is uh, with uh, the way you uh, the way you do your connection for any sound production assignment you do your connection or the equipment that you need how you connect that how again you monitor to ensure that you have high quality sound and how you record so once you record the other uh, you have to save your audio file otherwise you risk having that file disappear so you have to save once you have saved uh, then uh, the next thing that you need to do is to edit and editing shall be for another day another class thank you very much for being that nice audience asante nisana these televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our mku online platform you can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform we are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke. Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then, email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.